Hey yo, what's up? It's you, Otto Scotty, coming at you. Today's video, I'm just going to be uh, spitting some uh, redneck knowledge here. I want to talk about lead acid batteries and, and just energy power in general. Um, if you can add to this discussion, please do in the comments. Uh, so I, I generally use some core concepts when I'm going through these repairs in order to help me predict what's going on, uh, diagnose problems, so on and so forth. You know, people write books about this stuff. We, st I don't know, I don't know if we really fully understand, if humans fully understand at this point what, what electricity is, but we have a lot of models to help us understand how to use it and how it behaves. So I'm going to explain my understanding, <clears throat> the way I view it, and then uh, we can go from there. I view um, batteries, especially lead acid batteries in, in, in various vehicles, I think of it as a, an air compressor. So if we look at this um, tank here, this air compressor, we've got a um, pump here and it pumps air, sucks air through this filter, pumps it into this tank and here we have a, uh, oh I don't know, be maybe a 20 gallon tank, just estimating. Air is compressible and it squeezes it all into this tank and then we have a regulator here and we use that energy to run tools. Let's just do a little thought experiment here. Let's say we were to remove this regulator and just punch a hole in this tank when it's fully charged. What would happen? Let's say we put a hole in the side of this tank the side of my fist, the size of my fist. That's a pretty big hole and there's a lot of pressure in that tank. That amount of force would probably send the tank flying and the air in the tank would be depleted very quickly. So remember that. Now let's imagine that we poke a very small hole into this tank. We poke a little tiny hole, maybe say the size of my pinky finger, well, we're still going to have the same amount of pressure coming out of there, but it's not going to be the, the, it's going to, um, there's not going to be as much air coming out, and um, it probably won't send the tank flying, and it'll take longer for that amount of air to come out of the tank. So all of the things I just described there, you can use all of that understanding in sort of the, you know, physical world to understand electricity or like say a battery. So I think of a, a battery, lead acid battery more specifically, just like, just like an air compressor tank. So here we have two lead acid batteries that I'm trying to get going. I want to get my motorhome going up at uh, my camp. So I'm charging up these batteries. And essentially what I'm doing is you can think of this charger as the pump on the air compressor. And it's pumping charge into this battery. Another thing you can think of it as is, is like a spring. Um, this kind of helps to think of things in these different ways. But... Um, Let's keep going with the compre air compressor analogy. So this battery is now filled with charge and we can use this to do various work. We can either poke a big hole in it or a little hole. If I connect a very small wire with a, uh, well, a small wire let's say maybe the size of, uh, I don't know, maybe, let's say if I was to take a speaker wire like this, this was very thin, put it across these two terminals, that would be the same as poking a very small hole in that, uh, <clears throat> in that battery. It would basically uh, melt that um, small little wire <clears throat> but there wouldn't be any huge release of energy. It would it would melt that wire easily. If I put um, no, never do this. But if I took a 
something very thick like this. If I was to take this and put this across these two terminals, that would be the equivalent of poking a very large hole in that battery. Uh, and there would be a, a huge release of energy through this, this um, ratchet here. This would get red hot and it, it would melt. So this is the whole concept behind welding. On every battery we have a cold cranking amps rating. This one's 800. If we look at this battery here, it's uh, 785. Now you can think of the cold crank, cold crank, cold cranking amps as the size of the tank. So a larger tank is more capacity for, for the battery. It's a bigger compressor tank. So the smaller the tank, the less capacity. So when batteries die, oftentimes they'll read 12 volts. The 12 volts doesn't mean anything. It just it's that all that's telling you is is the amount of pressure in the battery. That doesn't mean that it has a lot of capacity. So batteries over time they lose their capacity or the size of their tank. It, they can't put as much air into their tank any longer. Which is why we have um, some, this, which is a load tester. And this is the proper way to test a battery. And we'll test this battery right now. If we look at the load tester, if you look carefully, it is essentially a, a wire. The load connector connects a wire between the two terminals and does it in a very controlled way because otherwise this would be very dangerous. It's basically a direct short, short circuit. This is going to get very hot. Um, it does it in a controlled way so that it meters or measures the battery's ability or the drop in voltage when a big hole is poked in it. That makes sense. Let's try this right now. So we're gonna hook the negative up to negative, positive up to positive. Now we got the load tester all hooked up. We're reading 14 volts. That's very good, but that doesn't mean anything. I was gonna select the cold cranking amps, 800, and we're gonna run this test. So keep an eye on this here probably gonna get red hot so the voltage is dropping and I can feel a tremendous amount of heat coming off here and as if you see the wire did get so under load the voltage or pressure dropped to 11.4 but it was still able to deliver a proper amount of capacity to turn this wire red hot and this is really 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 hot right now um, I can almost let me put my hand on that first but second let's test this one I think this one's probably gonna be decent Alright, so this is uh, 785 cold, cold cranking amps. We're reading 13 volts, so this one immediately doesn't have quite as much pressure in it as this one here. But let's select round up to the nearest 100 cold cranking amps. We're sitting at 13 volts, and we're going to see when we poke a big hole in this battery how much capacity it has to keep pushing energy. So let's do this. Immediately we're dropping down to 10.8 volts and it's telling us it's pretty weak but made that wire heat up red hot. So this one here is low testers telling us that it's weak. Although I think this battery still has quite a bit of Quite a bit of life left in it. 
and that uh, load tester is smoking hot smoking hot so um, so anyways a battery is a lot like a compressor tank now let me let's do another thought experiment what would happen if if we were to fully charge this tank up now let me ask you a question is it possible to poke a hole in this tank the size of the actual tank itself <laughs> so however big this the end of the tank is here what would happen if I put a hole in that tank the size of the end of that tank itself what would happen it would be theoretically a immediate and explosive release of energy all at once um, and um, there would basically be no nothing hindering the release of that energy now is that even possible well for a battery for a battery that's an interesting question is it possible to release all the energy in this battery at once well the answer is no that's actually pretty hard to do but what I'm touching on there is something called internal series resistance I think that's what it's called but every battery has a limit to how much energy it can deliver at any, at any time so there's an inherent internal resistance in every battery regardless of whether it's a, a lead acid battery lithium ion uh, you name it so when we're, if we're thinking uh, in terms of this air compressor tank we can only poke a hole so big and that determines the internal series resistance or that characteristic of the battery and all um, that, that's precisely why we have different designs for batteries we have different um, you know like um, a, a deep cycle or if you're running a home off solar power or, or RV that is going to require a different type of battery that has a, a lot of capacity so you want to be able to store a lot of energy but you will not be able to re the specific design you probably will not be able to release that energy as quick as you would from an automobile a red, regular car battery car lead acid, lead acid batteries that go in vehicles are designed to um, be able to deliver a lot of power a tremendous amount of power very quickly so their internal series resistance is, is really low um, you can imagine how, how much power it takes to turn over a, a, an engine. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of resistance there to overcome. So, <clears throat> so, yeah. I think that's about all I'll say today about that. That's how I think about batteries and um, electricity. Something we might touch on in the next video where I'll talk about is different power systems. So for instance, why do our cars run off 12 volts when our houses run off 120 volts alternating current? Auto, autos run off 12 volts direct current. So that, that's a whole other conversation. Still very interesting. But anyways, I've always wanted to talk about this and sort of get a discussion happening. And uh, if any of you guys have anything to add to this discussion, please do in the comments. I think it's very helpful. And this is just a model, okay? We're not, we're not saying this is how batteries work, but this is just a representation to allow us to understand how they work or how we can use them. So anyways, just a bit of a short video today. 
um, you Ottawa Scotty signing out. I hope you enjoyed that and um, we'll maybe get you thinking a little bit about batteries and different types of batteries. I hope you enjoy the video. Bye for now. You Ottawa Scotty out.